Hi. So today I'm going to talk to you about permanent residence application in Canada through family sponsorship. I'm a Portuguese citizen. I'm living in Canada for just over a year now and I'm married to a Canadian citizen. And after months of compiling all the forms, all the necessary documentation, we're finally ready to send this application. But before you do, I'm going to show you all the forms and everything we gather in the hopes of helping any other couple that might be passing for the same situation as we are. So, first of all, it's important to clarify that through Sponsor Comala Partner Sponsorship, there's two options of application uh, in Canada and outside Canada. The forms are different, the processing times are different, the, the application is sent to different places depending on the type of the application, so please be sure to uh, fill the, the right forms and to send to the right place and, um, and to be sure about the right processing times in your case. We can get all the information on Citizenship Immigration Canada's website, there's all that information there. So, since I'm already living in Canada uh, with my wife, um, we decided for the in Canada application. So, first of all, there's this document checklist. Uh, they explain in details uh, the forms that are necessary to be completed by the applicant, the, the forms to be completed by the sponsor, the forms to be completed by both, which is uh, use of a representative, like immigration lawyer, which is not our case. We decide to do this application on our own. Uh, and this document checklist as well as to go with the application. Also, they uh, ask photocopies of several documents both for the applicant, which is the person being sponsored, and uh, the sponsor. Uh, they have here uh, several documents like passport pages showing your passport number, name, date of birth, passport issue, expiry date, and step made by Canadian authority show your most recent entry in ca into Canada. Indication of status in Canada if you're a visitor, if you're a temporary foreign worker, which is my case. Uh, if you're um, if you're out of status um, as well, uh, also if you have a green card from the United States, you can also have to send a photocopy of that as well. Your birth certificate. Um, also, it's important if you are if the uh, applicant, so the person being sponsored, is. Uh, from a country that does not speak English or French, which is my case, uh, all the documents, for instance, for certificate, have to be translated in uh, English or French, one of the Canada's official languages. So they also have they also ask the documents depending on the situation of the person, like for instance, custody papers if uh, you have children and you are divorced and you have the custody papers, you have to send this which is not our case. Also, if uh, if I had children and those children were already born in Canada, so they have a Canadian birth certificate, I have to send a photocopy of that, which is not my case. So they have uh, several documents that they ask, and of course it depends on each situation what applies to you. For uh, the documents for the sponsor to be sent, uh, Canadian birth certificates, or uh, if uh, the sponsor is a permanent resident, they can uh, uh, send a confirmation of permanent residence document or record of landing, or for both sides of permanent residence card, etc. Um, so it depends on the situation. Uh, very important tip uh, do not send originals of these documents unless stated otherwise. They ask here. Photocopies. Uh, photocopies do not need to be certified. Do not send original documents unless specified, as they will not be returned. Uh, also, for the applicant, it's very important, they ask police certificates, uh, 
once again they have to be translated if they're not already in English or French. She's my kid. Uh, and prove a completion of upfront medical examination from the panel physician. So before you send this application, you can uh, have the the medical examination already, which is valid for one year. Uh, if not, you, you can send without the medical examination, but they will ask in the future for, they will give you instructions and a form for you to do that medical examination. Uh, an important information is that not all doctors are um, certified to uh, do these medical examinations for immigration purposes. On Citizenship Immigration Canada, there's a list of if you enter uh, which Canadian province you live, uh, we're talking about in Canada applications. Uh, you see a list of doctors that are close to you in your province and doctors that are certified from Station of Education Canada to perform medical examinations. As uh, I'm a temporary foreign worker right now, so uh, to be a temporary foreign worker, I for my work permit application I had to do a medical examination as well, so I already knew. Uh, which doctor to go. I already knew a doctor uh, that is certified by Citizenship Immigration Canada to do this kind of, of application. Uh, but if uh, you do not, just uh, look on Citizenship Immigration Canada's website and that information. Um, also, uh, they ask for, once again, there are several documents that uh, about both of us like photocopy of the marriage certificate, of course, or um, a photocopy of divorce, annulment, or separation, or death certificates if one of the spouses or both the spouses were previously married, which is not our case. Uh, photographs of marriage or common law relationship ceremony, if applicable, photocopies are acceptable, originals will not be returned. I will, uh, I can show you the, we printed, we had digital photos of our weddings and things together and everything so we just printed that in normal paper will do and uh, like we'll show you right away so uh, photocopies uh, will do originals will not be returned also they asked two photographs of the principal applicant which is the person being sponsored and or dependent children if uh, this application also includes children which is not my case uh, and those uh, photos uh, needed to be uh, in such photos on a separate envelope and sta uh, staple envelope to the Schedule A background declaration, so the form IMM 5669. Also, second page, in this document checklist, they ask proof of income for sponsor. This is very important because they need to uh, assess, first of all, they need to assess if my uh, my wife is able to sponsor me financially so uh, they asking uh, op original option c print out of last notice of assessment uh, for the most recent taxation year along with printouts of all income slips example t4 uh, you can get these printouts free of charge uh, from canada revenue agency you have to call a 1-800 number that they have here and also if you are employed, uh, they also ask an original of a letter from the current employer stating your premium employment, salary, regular hours per week. This for the sponsor. Uh, also, of course, they have other situations. If you are receiving any um, any social security, welfare, etc. Also, the processing fees. You, uh, there's two options for the, to pay the processing fees uh, through the internet, which was um, my situation, and is the preferred option. Or you can order on Citizenship Immigration website. You can order a form. Uh, you receive is about one week around that. Uh, that form uh, that you has to be stamped by a Canadian financial institution that proves that you pay it and of course it has to be sent along with the application and of course uh, there's the address here for uh, where the application needed to be sent uh, for in Canada applications for sponsorship applications in Canada they have to be sent to Vagreville, Alberta 
there's the address here. So, next, the receipt. This is the online receipt uh, to NAPAY. Uh, they accept credit card. No problem. Um, the amount, the card number, the receipt number. You have to put your uh, information here on the receipt. You have to send it here. Uh, my tip is to send it on top of the application along with the document checklist, of course. So they can see right away when they open the envelope, they can see right away that uh, you pay the necessary fees that they need to be paid to process this application. Next, now I'm going to talk about my part of the application, the foreign citizen one, uh, which is the principal applicant. When on the form it says principal applicant, they're referring to the person being sponsored. Just not get any confusion. So um, we have this application here. It is the form IMM0008, which is called Generic Application Form for Canada. There's several details. This is a generic application. Uh, That's why the first question is program uh, under which you are applying. Uh, in the category under that program, number of people number of family members on this application, the etc. They ask personal details about the about the applicant, full name, the information is like height and eye color, place of birth, country, citizenship, country current of residence, so what in this case Canada and uh, what my status is valid um, for. So also Ask if I'm married and the date of marriage and name of my wife, contact information, uh, mail address, phone number, just information about passport or national identity document as well. Also, the occupation and education details, highest level of education, number of years of education in total, current occupation, intended occupation about language details, native language, if uh, which language you use more frequently, if you are able to communicate in English or, and or French. Also, uh, this form uh, can be filled out on your computer and be printed as a validate button right here. So, uh, when you validate, uh, and it's all correct, and you print it, it appears this barcodes. Also important to send along with the application. Uh, one thing that I forgot to talk about is that on this application, uh, if children are included on this application, uh, you, there's a button on the computer on, on this form to for additional dependents. For dependents, add dependents and appear all this information. Uh, Full name, sex, height, eye color, date of birth, support, citizenship, etc. Uh, for each dependent. I don't have children, so this situation does not apply to me. So, next one. It's uh, additional family information, also to be completed by the principal applicant, the person being sponsored. So, on this additional family information, uh, I have to put my name, name of my spouse or common partner, my mother and father name, they took a birth of all of us, plus a birth, marital status, present address, as long as children, if, um, if it was the case, which is not. So if not, I have to uh, sign here. I certify that not having children, either natural or adopt. All that, uh, and sign also at the bottom, the certification as well. Um, This is the Schedule A background declaration, also to be filled out by the principal applicant, the person being sponsored. Here on this envelope is those photographs that they asked, two photographs. They are uh, very specific uh, about the dimensions and angle of the photographs and all that, so um, uh, make sure to check all that on the Citizenship Immigration Canada about photo specifications. So here I put inside this envelope like they, they ask on the document checklist to put the photographs stapled to the on the inside the envelope and stapled to the Schedule A background declaration. So I did. So uh, I put it here on this um, envelope two photos of the applicant and then I put my name so they can know 
through this one. So, here, you have to indicate if you are a principal applicant, you talk about full name, they ask full name reading native script, uh, which in my case is the same, since I'm Portuguese, but uh, if I was uh, from China or Korea or or from an Arab country, so use different scripts, I had to, to be here. And date of birth, personal details about my mother and father, also uh, yes or no questions here. On the second page, they ask about education. Uh, how many years you successfully completed for each of the following levels of education from elementary, primary school, secondary, high school, university, college, trade school, or other post secondary high school? It's on this uh, part here. So you have um, also personal history. Uh, this is very detailed. They ask provide the details of your personal history since the age of 18 or the past 10 years, whichever comes first. So they ask, uh, they have the dates, activity, uh, city or town, status in the country, name of company if you are employed, or name of school if you are study, etc. Um, start with the most recent information under activity, write your occupation or job title if you are working. If you are not working, provide information on what you are doing, for example, unemployed, studying, traveling, retiring, detachment, etc. Uh, also, and this is very important, please ensure that you do not leave any gaps in time. So, for this day, they give us here a little bit of space to write. I, uh, this space was not enough for my personal history for the past uh, 10 years, so uh, I had to, uh, at the end of this, At the end of this form, I had to add a letter uh, with I put my name, the name of this document, question, this was question 8 about personal history, and I explained that my personal history since the age of 18 do not fit, does not fit on the space given, so I put here all my personal history since the age of 18, without leaving gaps in time, very important. This is an important tip. Uh, if uh, this, your information, the information you need to provide does, does not fit on the space they give on the forms, uh, you should just write on a separate sheet of paper uh, what you need to, to, to write. Do not forget to put the name of the form and the question that you're answering. And of course, attach that to the form itself. Also, uh, they ask memberships or association with organizations. Um, and this includes any political, social, youth or student organization, trade unions and professional associations. You can write none if uh, this does not apply to you. Government positions, if any, which is not the case. Uh, military service, if that was the case. And also all addresses that uh, you have lived since your 18th birthday or the past 10 years. And do not use PO boxes. So they ask uh, the days, the street number, city and town, province, state or district, zip code, country. So the, they ask the entire address of um, every place you live since the age of uh, 18 or, um, or for the past 10 years. And also at the end of the form, they also the declaration sign this part here. And uh, this part does not need to be completed because it says do not complete the following section now. You may be asked to sign the passes of a representative of the Canadian government or an official point of the Canadian government. So, this thing back. So, next we have a big one. <laughs> it's called the uh, Spouse and Common Law Partner Questionnaire. Is the form IMM5285. This is a big one, it's very detailed, very intense very hard to fill out. Uh, once again, they give you a little space, a little space here to write, but uh, if not enough, don't uh, be afraid to just write the rest on another separate sheet of paper with the name of the form, question your answer, and then your answer, and attach that to uh, this spouse and partner questionnaire. So, on this form, 
they want to know everything and anything about uh, your relationship because the difference between um, being approved or not in this case is uh, if you're able to prove that your relationship is genuine and continuing so this is very thick one as you can see with all the appendices that is added so let's start from the form itself this is all the form looks like so so they ask when was the first time you met your sponsor in person the date uh, location and describe the circumstances of the first meeting they give you a little bit of space here it was not enough uh, so I wrote on a separate sheet of paper all this information and I send it at the end also uh, did anyone introduce you to your sponsor? Um, did uh, you and your sponsor go on outings and or trips together? If the answer is yes, explain. Uh, if the answer is no, explain a, sheet, uh, explain a separate sheet of paper. If the answer is yes, describe the types of outings, trips on a separate sheet of, a separate sheet of paper and attach photos if any. So this big one here, very thick. This is just for the question too. So I wrote on the cover letter uh, the descriptions of all the photos that I put here I have here 20 photos for uh, this question 2 of this policy common partner questionnaire and um, there's no description they just mark it as for number 1, for number 2, for number 3 so uh, and here on the cover I uh, explain for number one and I put the date, location and a little description of the context. Uh, this photo is taken on this event or the situation, we did this, we did that. So this is the descriptions. And I signed it at the end as well. And uh, here starts the photos. So I put photo number one here. I put IMM5285, spousal criminal part of questionnaire, question two. So it is important to provide information what these photos refer to. This question two, spousal criminal part of questionnaire. And here I put the photos. You can see several photos whose description is on the front. Uh, I'll continue with this um, application. Is the relationship known to your close friends and family? If uh, no, explain on a separate sheet of paper. If yes, on a separate sheet of paper, give their names, relationship to you, and the days your sponsor met them. Well, uh, my sponsor, my wife, uh, never went to Portugal. And uh, she never met my uh, my family in Portugal, so that's basically what I explained here on a separate sheet of paper. Here about yes, question four. Okay, explain here. Oh, why uh, it was not possible for her to meet my family. Also. Uh, if you are in a common law relationship, because these kind of applications are not only for married couples, but also couples that are in a common law relationship, uh, they have to provide evidence of a relationship like joint insurance policies, wills, uh, anything naming your partner's beneficiary, documents showing travels together, documents showing the same address, etc. 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 Do you have any moon? Also, question seven is making question here. Uh, where there are formal ceremonies to recognize or celebrate your relationship, an engagement ceremony, traditional customary marriage ceremony, commitment ceremony, partnership ceremony, reception, etc. If no, uh, this is the question. Uh, explain a separate sheet of paper. And if yes, for each ceremony, attach a photograph and provide in a separate sheet of paper the date, location, number of entities, and indicate who performed the ceremony. So, that's what we did here on question seven. So on this page, question seven, I explain uh, the date we got married and where, and I explain who attended the ceremony, 
it was a very small one so with uh, my wife's uh, side of the family so i put it here then the family and um, also who officiated the ceremony and also a description of the photos i attached photos uh i kept it to the minimum because the, uh, with this application i'm gonna send several appendices that uh we think that it might prove that our relationship is genuine and continuing so uh we sent all the photos there and uh, here we try to keep it at the minimum so we we uh, sent three photos two of the wedding ceremony itself and one of the cutting the wedding cake at the reception and uh, we explained here at the end that uh, these are just three of our several wedding photos just a few as a detachment of question 7 of the form IMM 5285 for a complete set of wedding photos please see appendix G of this application so like, you see, uh, so like I said for a complete set of photos about our wedding there's the appendixes that I'm going to show you later so uh, there's the photos here I've put uh, for number one wedding ceremony also the name of the, another photo, photo of us together uh, with the jade with uh, my wife's side of family so the cutting the wedding cake etc so I try to keep it at the middle in this case because like I said on the appendices there is a more complete set of photos the same thing for the outings together Also, uh, did your, the following persons attend the ceremony? Your parents. When it says that your parents are referring to the the person being sponsored, parents. Uh, no or yes. If no, explain on a separate sheet of paper. This is the yes or no questions. And uh, your sponsor's parents. Yes or no. Are you or your sponsor pregnant? So all that and um, also second page here. Um, if they were, uh, if uh, the your sponsor was previously married, etc. This signature here. If you need an interpreter, that's an interpreter declaration here. So, oh, at the end of this document, this is part of the questionnaire. It's not even a question, it's uh, just a suggestion. It says here, question. On a separate sheet of paper, provide any additional details of your current relationship that you believe would help to prove your relationship is genuine and continuing. So, do you want a letter? Uh, from the person being sponsored, the principal applicant, uh, with any additional details that you didn't expect already, that uh, you think might help prove that the relationship is genuine. So, for that, I wrote a letter. It's uh, three pages. When I explain my situation, our situation right now, what we passed together, because I'm, um, I also explain why we applied just now in 2013 and not last year when uh, we got married, because uh, I'm we got married for almost a year now, and I explain why uh, we didn't apply soon, and um, and here I go through the what we passed together as a couple ups and downs like any other couple and uh, the way she stood uh, by my side always also um, talk about the beginning of our relationship and what I felt for her and what we felt for each other and what we all passed to each other here in Canada and what I feel about her basically and of course I signed it also I attached this letter this is five pages uh, that my wife decided to write a letter it's not mandatory it's not required but we thought it might help for her to write uh, a letter explaining on her own words about our relationship and 
like they ask, uh, proof that our relationship is genuine, continuing, and we thought it would be nice to have not only my opinion about uh, our relationship, but also my wife's opinion, the sponsor's opinion, in first hand about uh, our relationship is uh, five pages. Also, on these five pages, uh, she talked about uh, everything since we met until now and all the events that we went together. So basically, chronological story of um, our relationship. And um, for each paragraph, we uh, explain, uh, we make references to uh, the appendixes that we sent along with this application. And all the photos of the outings together, they're also on the appendix. Other things, so five pages. So it's a very intense uh, document, this one, this Pause the Kumo Partner Questionnaire. Very intense, very hard to fill out. So next, we have um, now going to the sponsor side of the application. We have this application to sponsor, sponsorship agreement and undertaking. They ask questions about the sponsor, uh, very details, personal details like name, sex, date of birth, place of birth, status in Canada, etc. When uh, we got married, etc. Contact information, same thing here. Contact information they ask about mailing address, phone number, uh, email, etc. Now they ask the sponsor, sponsor uh, with terrible assessment. They ask your yes and no questions uh, for the sponsor. That's very important. Continues on this next page. Here, next week. also uh, it talks about what it takes, what this being a sponsor entails, what are the rights and responsibilities of the sponsor and the person being sponsored. It's a sponsorship agreement. Uh, so it explains everything. Uh, the obligations of the sponsor and if applicable, the co-signer that can be a co-signer of this application or not. The obligations of the, the person being sponsored as well. Uh, important information. And of course they have here uh, our signatures and the dates. Very important, very important uh, is that this uh, sponsorship agreement and undertaking and needs to be signed by both the sponsor and the person being sponsored and a co-signer if is the case, which in that case is not. And of course, like the generic form for Canada, there's there's a validate button on this um, this application, so it prints out this barcode as well. Also, for the sponsor application, there's this sponsorship evaluation. Uh, they want to know if uh, my wife is financially uh, able to sponsor me, if she's employed or not. And in case if in the case she is employed, so we have to put employer's name, employer's address, phone number, the occupation, and uh, the starting date, the name of the supervisor. Also, could put if you're self-employed. It depends, of course, on each situation. And the personal net income they ask here: the amount, uh, net personal income for the 12-month period preceding the date of your application, and the amount, and then the which when that period. Uh, start and ended. And also they have here number of family members and persons including in undertakings in effect and under and not and not yet in effect. So because already includes the one here for yourself which is the person uh, the sponsor and then the current undertaking the number of people that are um, in this to be sponsored on this application and also previous undertakings if the sponsor already sponsored another person previously, and etc. And also, there's numbers of persons including previous undertakings. You can write none or uh, or non-applicable 
uh, if um, the sponsor did not uh, uh, did, was not the sponsor uh, before. Also, they ask for this as a proof of uh, income. They ask this uh, documents from Can Revenue Agency the income tax return information. Uh, option C print out is the pages. So C print out of uh, last notice of assessment for the most recent taxation year. And also uh, we also requested to Can the Revenue Agency through that uh, one eight hundred number that is on the document checklist. Also request uh, for a copy of the T4. These are originals. By the way, cannot be photocopied. You can. A tip uh, is to take a photocopy um, for your records of everything you send on this application. Please take a photocopy for your own records, but send it when they ask originals, like the, this original option C printout, uh, along with printouts of um, income slips like T4s. Uh, you have to send originals, but please keep a photocopy for yourself, for for your records. So, also, they ask a letter of employment. This is the letter of employment stating my wife's name and where she, where she uh, works and um, the address. Uh, if she's full-time or part-time, so important information as well. How many hours per week she works and when she started working, etc. Uh, also here on the second page, the second letter, that is uh, information that is not on the first one, which is the hourly salary, uh, how much she, my wife earns per hour, which is an important information for a citizenship immigration candidate to know, to assess if she's able to sponsor me or not. So, now we're going to the, um, the photocopies itself. This is photocopies of me, principal applicant, person being sponsored. They ask for a copy of my uh, passport. Also, a photocopy of my um, uh, work permit, which is my uh, most uh, my status in Canada right now. Which for a copy of my work permit, because right now I'm a temporary foreign worker. And for the copy of the stamp on my, for copy my stamp of my passport of my most recent entry in Canada. Also, they ask for a copy of my birth certificate. Here, there's two pages of this. Uh, I also I had to add a, a little bit of page at the beginning, and I'm going to explain why. And to explain, uh, like I said at the beginning, all documents that are not already in English or French need to be uh, translated, to have uh, an official translation. Uh, for some other reason, my birth certificate, it's not only in Portuguese, my, my tongue, and since I was born in Portugal, but also appears in, in French. Uh, this happened because before I came to Canada, I uh, am already expecting the, to be uh, uh, to need this kind of documents, I requested my birth certificate, and the clerk asked me if I wanted the regular version in Portuguese or the international version. And since I was coming to Canada, I of course asked the international version, and I thought it would come in English. But for my surprise, it came in French. Uh, that's fine by me because Canada uh, has two official languages, English and French. So as long as it's in one of the official languages um, of Canada is fine by me and is fine by citizenship in Asia Canada as well. <laughs> so uh, this basically what I explained here. I explain um, oh, why this international version comes in Portuguese and French and since uh, French is one of Canada's official languages uh, I didn't need to, to present an official translation of this document since it already comes in French. Although in tiny letters but yes in French. Also, uh, my police check with the translation. This has to be translated. This is my police check. It came all the way from Portugal and through the Portuguese consulate. I had to contact the Portuguese consular. They sent me a form and I paid the necessary fees and everything, and including fees for translation of the document. So they sent me here the translation of the document. 
this is the translation and this is the original of the, um, the police trap also the medical examination I uh, this was the sheet that they gave me when I did the medical examination go like this the information about me my uh, documents about my passport my my passport number issue country date of issue date of uh, expiry date etc and um, which application it's a family application it says here and the examination is required etc and where I also attach although it's not required but I decided to attach uh, a photocopy of first the patient a photocopy of the, the receipt when I did the medical examination it's another proof that I did the medical examination uh, also a photocopy they asked the um, chest x-ray so I attach here a photocopy of the, the receipt photocopy of the receipt uh, for that uh, chest uh, x-ray as well as the photocopy of uh, the blood tests. I had to do blood and urine tests and uh, there's a photocopy of what I have to pay for that because those tests are not free. Also they ask um, one photocopy of uh, one proof of Canadian citizenship or permanent residency uh, of my wife, my sponsor. So we attach my wife's birth certificate. Photocopy of my wife's birth certificate, of course. So the front and the back. Also, photocopy of marriage certificate, extremely important to prove that we are in fact, in fact a married couple and it is marriage and everything else. So with that said, these are all the, the forms, forms and photocopies of those, uh, those documents. Now, the big ones. These are the pregnancies. Yes. They're a bit. <laughs> Especially because of the first ones, which are the, our emails. Uh, it's uh, really, really big. So, bigger than the, the form itself anyway on that uh, that letter uh, both letter that I wrote and letter that my wife wrote uh, we also make we make reference to each appendix of this uh, these are appendices of documents and evidence that our relationship is genuine and continuing and documents that we think it might help prove that's uh, our relationship is genuine and that we are married not for immigration purposes but we are married because we love each other basically so first I put a cover letter I put a, on top of the first appendix to not be a page, a page loose I made a cover letter explaining uh, what appendix refers to the appendix A is the email log from the website we met because me and my wife met online. Uh, the appendix B, the personal email logs because after the, that website we decide to use our own uh, email accounts. So we also have an appendix for that. Appendix C, a screenshot of one of our many conversations through the video chat. And also uh, another crossword puzzle uh, that I made uh, about us, about the information that we, we talk. Uh, during that um, that uh, those video chats to MSN to Skype for the copy of the receipts from the purchase or purchase of the wedding rings uh, the wedding rings are purchased on an online store and uh, this is my wedding ring by the way uh, so purchase on an online store uh, with my name and uh, our address and so it was also important and they were also they were engraved. Uh, inside the the wedding ring, uh, there's both our names in both our wedding rings. So, and that information is also on the receipts because we had to pay an extra fee for them to be engraved. So um, that we thought that that would be nice to put it. So also appendix uh, appendix F photocopy of wedding invitations. 
that's G wedding photos and more than just the three photos that I put on this Pause Come Love Partner questionnaire. Also, can go to our cards and letters we received on, on our wedding. Also, my wife's phone records with my phone number highlighted, as well as date, time, and late of conversations. Uh, also, statutory declarations from um, our side of the family uh, and friends about us as a couple and the authenticity of our marriage and relationship. That's uh, what I call reference letters. We are able to get reference letters from uh, both my wife's friends and family to attest the, um, the authenticity of our marriage and what they think of, about our relationship. And that's very important for a relationship immigration candidate to have the opinion of others about us as a couple. Also, uh, appendix K, which is going to be a big one, I'm going to show you. Uh, photos and other evidence of all things together with date, location and description. Um, I had 20 photos on the, the outings together, about the outings together, on the spot um, to part of questionnaire, the question two. Uh, this time I have a little bit more, and with the description in, on the, uh, below the photos, and so. Also appendix uh, L, photos with family. We don't spend uh, much time with uh, my wife's side of the family, because uh, we love each other. <laughs> Uh, we love each other very much, uh, but uh, and of course we help each other when, when, uh, when any person needs help. But uh, we just have our lives together. We just have our lives in separate and other ways. Do it is, and also uh, my wife, my my side of the family in Portugal. Um, we don't have contact with them, so. Uh, so we don't have on the the Sabanx L photos with family. We don't have much thing to to uh, to show, but we explain that as well. And also Appendix M, I uh, I put several documents there. It's a uh, and I classify as other evidence of marriage in good faith, uh, like my name as uh, or emergency contact at work. Uh, our individual phone bills sent to the same address to prove that we live together. That's very important because um, one fact that it might help prove that our relationship is genuine and continues the fact that we live together. And we live together since 2012, uh, since last year. So uh, uh, we have more than one year, uh, a little more of one year of cohabitation. Uh, and that's important for Safety Immigration Canada to uh, believe in that's yes, we are married for real. Uh, also, joint savings accounts. Uh, we also have a joint Costco membership with our names in the same account, uh, with our healthcare card, etc. Uh, all the appendices are signed by both of us my name here and my wife's name uh, signed here because this is a joint application for me and my sponsor, which is my wife. So, uh, and these appendices are referenced both in my letter and, and in my wife's letter. So we decided that would be a good idea to be signed by both of us. So this is the cover letter. So here we go to the appendix A. Uh, each appendix also has a cover letter on its own explaining what that appendix refers to. This, this appendix A. Thanks A, like I said, is email log from the website we met. And I explain a little bit of what that website is. Um, I explain it's a free website with no credit or debit cards are asked at any time to, to its users and a, a little copy of um, a quote of uh, what they, they say on the website. Uh, to explain, you know, and of course the, the emails itself. You know, there's several emails from from January 2012 until several emails until uh, yeah there's the ones of April but in the meantime uh, in the meantime in the middle of February we not decide not to use this website not so much and decide to go to our email accounts and we just went to the um, 
to the website again when uh, we had any problems with connecting with Skype or MSN so then we went to that website I think Skype as well so this is the big one fake this the Pex B is our personal email log and I explained that after we met on that website uh, we felt the need to communicate outside websites and use personal emails as well as video chat like uh, MSN, Skype and uh, this uh, this, um, this appendix contains all emails emails that we wrote to each other from February 2012 until July uh, 15, 2012 which was when I came to Canada and uh, lived with, with my wife since then so this is several emails we always communicated we communicated through Skype but mainly 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 by MSN and uh, we um, then when we were online when we were offline because each one had our, our own jobs and besides all, also our seven hours time difference between um, Portugal and Alberta Canada uh, seven hours time difference on winter and six hours on summer so uh, they also made us make a um, sometimes when not possible for both of us to be online that's one of the problems of long distance relationships but we always manage to uh, communicate together and uh, through lots of emails and we send voice recordings to each other. Instead of writing an email, we we also uh, made the voice recording of what we want to say and send it to each other as well. So we clean our voices, hear each other's voices as well. Videos. I made a couple of videos um, for her, and that's it. So on the pink C. We have uh, screenshots of our uh, many uh, conversations through the video chat of the, the website that we met at a video chat feature and sometimes we use it as well. This is, uh, 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 that's our, our uh, usernames here and uh, our, uh, the screenshot of when we are talking. I think it would be interesting for them to know that we didn't just communicate through emails. Also, we have that crossword puzzle that I was talking about. I put my names, uh, our names here, Diana and Jade's crossword puzzle. And uh, I made this. It's uh, I found a website when you can do this for free online. I don't remind the top of my head because this was made a very long time ago. But uh, uh, when I find it, I can put it uh, there in the description on the YouTube video. Uh, it's a fun activity. For us to do together is what I explain here that uh, as a couple living in a long distance.